All right, today's problem is we want to construct a binary search tree from a pre-ordered traversal. So they give us a pre-ordered traversal, and then what we want to do is we want to return this root node 8 such that it represents this binary search tree. So let's do a quick refresher for a binary search tree. Um, binary search tree, we have this property that uh, anything, for example, here is an 8. You know, if we this is our... our Line, uh, number line. Everything to the left of this has to be smaller and everything everything to the right of this has to be bigger. So here we have 8 and the same goes for 5, 1, 7, 10, and 12. So they have this property. Okay, so what about a pre-ordered traversal? So a pre-ordered traversal means that we print and then we recursively go left, and then we recursively go right. So in this case, we print eight, so we have eight, and then we go down and we see five, and what we do first is we print. So here we print five, and then we go left again, and we print one, and here uh, one can't go left and it can't go right. So what happens is it pops back to the parent, and the parent, we've already tried going to the left, so now we're going to try going to the right. And here we print 7. So it kind of snakes around like this. So 10, and finally 12. So what we want to do when we're solving this question is we want to, you know, follow the path of this pre-order traversal. So we start at 8, which has a number line value here, 8. And then we want, we read the next integer, which is 5. Now we have to decide, does it belong on the left side or the right side? And that's an easy check. If it belongs on the left side, um, it's going to be less than 8. And in pre-order traversal, if we can go left, we always go left. So here, we're going to go left. So here it comes down to left, and we have 5 here. And now we have the same question for 5. Uh, can 1 go to the left or the right? And it seems like 1 can, so we'll do that as well. And then here, we hit 7. Now at 7, we can't go left because there's nothing there, so there's nothing here. And we can't go right either, so we pop back to our previous call. And here at 5, we check to see, can we put it here? And this check, you know, so here, our check is less than 5, which is why we put 1 there. But here our check becomes, is it less than 8? So is it less than our parent's constraint? So our parent has a constraint that has to be less than 8. And we want to make sure that 7, if we can fit here, is also less than 8. So here we have 7, and now we have 10. So 10 is not less than 7, so we pass there. It's 10 less than 8? No. So we also pass through there. And we come back here, and this constraint is just that it needs to be less than infinity. So that works. So we have 10 here. And now we read 12. So when we decide which way here, what we want to do is the same as before. We have 10 here. It belongs in this region if it's less than 10. And it belongs in this region if it's less, less than infinity. So you can see here as well, we inherit our parent's right constraint. So for the left constraint, it just has to be less than us. And for the right constraint, is that it has to be the same constraint as the one that our parent gave us. So here, we'll do 12, and then we finish up our algorithm. Okay, let's try implementing it. So we want to do it um, in a recursive manner. Public static int. Let's have our uh, create, have pre-order here, and then we want to tell it what index do we want to do we want to create from it. So of int type, and then we have some sort of a constraint that our parent gave us. And the first thing we'll do is we'll just create a create that node. So new tree node at this pre-order at i. And now we want to check can we put this to our left side. Because if we can, we should. So what we'll do is we'll increment i. So now we're reading the next element. And 
if i is still less than preorder dot length and uh, preorder at i is less than so our constraint is the value of the node then node dot left we want to create this preorder at i um, with the constraint of node dot val so create our left subtree for us now we want to check our right side just like a pre-order traversal. But here you run into a problem because this left side will read the pre-order and create any nodes that is belongs to our left subtree. So that means by the time we get here, i is different. It's already, it might have read some values um, in our pre-order traversal. So this is insufficient because the i we have here is local to the scope of this function. So what you could do instead is you know you could make this a class member and have some sort of a class variable of int index or um, another way is to make this into an array of a single element so we'll call it cursor where the single element is just the index so we can call this the cursor and then what we'll have here is this will become cursor at zero cursor at zero plus plus and at zero and cursor at zero and then here instead of cursor at zero we pass in the cursor that way when it updates in this by the time we get back out here cursor is updated so we have the correct index okay so how do we know if that value should be on the right side well first we have to check again that it's less than the length and our preorder at cursor at zero is less than our parent constraint because we're on the right side now. So if this case passes, then we'll create that node preorder at this cursor um, with our parent constraint, we'll pass it down. Okay, and at the very end, we'll return our node. Um, so actually here, instead of an int, we're returning a tree node. Okay. So that should be it. And now we have to figure out how to invoke this. What's the first case that we have? So our first case is we're going to want to create the root node. So it's going to be preorder at uh, the zeroth index. So we'll create a new array with one element of the zeroth index. And then the constraint is going to be, well, what's the, what's the parent constraint? It's that anything less than infinity goes. So Remember, this is the case of eight here in the middle. And this eight initially had a constraint that it just has, has to be less than infinity. So here we'll have integer dot max value instead. And because we're assuming that the zeroth index can be read, we need to put in a check. Preorder dot length is less than one, return null because we can't create a preorder or a binary search tree from nothing. Okay, so that should be it. We'll give it a go. Okay, looks to be good. We'll try submitting it. Cool. So if we do a little bit of a runtime here, you notice that um, we call create until, you know, until, at least until we read the full array. And at each call, we increment our index by one. So that means worst case, you know, this is O of n. We increment it on every call and every call before we create another call, we check to make sure that we're still within our array. So at most it's gonna get called n times. And then I guess another point I wanna note here is that here you see that we're not checking the left bound. And that's because if we reached here, um, then that means the left bound has already been checked for us. So, so, you know, here, when we had seven, I didn't check that seven is greater than five because the only way that we could get back to this case is if we saw a number that is greater than five because we've looped around in our preorder traversal. So I only have to check that it's less than eight. Okay, um, that's it for today. And I'll see you on the next one.